In this section, we are going to talk about the basic trigonometric graphs, which are sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. First off, let's talk about a period function. Oops. So a period function is a function that repeats its values at regular intervals. For example, here's an example of a period function. So let's say you have a function that takes this shape, and then it just keeps repeating that, that same shape over and over and over again. That's an example of a period function. Uh, uh, the period of a periodic function is a horizontal distance required for the graph of the period to complete one cycle. So one cycle is when we end up back at the same point. So this would be one period of a periodic function. Sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent are all periodic functions. Okay, so today our focus is going to be to graph these periodic functions, starting with the sine of x. For sine and cosine, there are five key points we're going to use to graph these functions. 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So the main focus here is to know how to get the y values for these five key points for sine of x, cosine of x, and then we'll see other key points for tangent, cotangent. Okay, so I'm going to draw the unit circle once again, and I'm going to go back one slide. So quick recap of the unit circle. Uh, this is zero radians, and that corresponds to the point one comma zero. Here is 90 degrees, but we're going to work in radians now. So 90 degrees is pi over two radians, and the corresponding y value is zero, uh, corresponding point is zero one. This is 180 degrees or pi radians. The corresponding ordered pair on the unit circle is negative one zero. This is 270 or three pi over two. The corresponding ordered pair on the unit circle is zero negative one. And it goes back to 2 pi, so 0 and 2 pi are coterminal. This is the same as 360 degrees, which is 2 pi radians, which we learned in sections 2.1 and 2.2. So let's keep these, uh, these order pairs of the unit circle in mind for each of these angles. So I'm going to recreate that. I have 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Now the circle our unit circle has the following ordered pairs. We have one zero, we have zero one, we have negative one zero, and we have zero negative one. Okay, so let's start with zero radians. Remember that the sine of any angle is going to be the y value of the ordered pair on the unit circle. So if my x value is 0, what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for sine of 0 radians. Now the sine of 0 radians is always going to be the y value of that ordered pair, which is here. The y value is going to be 0. Next, I'm looking for the sine of pi over 2. So I look at pi over 2, and the y value at pi over 2 is equal to 1. And remember, sine is always going to be the y value of any ordered pair on the unit circle. So that'll be one. For pi, I'm looking, so I'm looking for the sine of pi. And the sine of pi is once again going to be the y value, which is going to be zero. Then I'm looking for sine of three pi over two. So if I if I want to find the sine of three pi over two, I'm looking for the y value of the ordered pair at three pi over two, that's negative one. And then for 2 pi, it goes back to 0 radians that are coterminal. The y value is going to be 0. So those are going to be my, my five key points and their respective y values. If I were to plot this, I have 0, 0. I have pi over 2. I'm going to go by uh, halves. This is 1. This is negative 1. I have pi over 2, comma 1. I have pi, comma 0. I have 3 pi over 2, comma negative 1. And then I have 2 pi, comma 0. So this is one period of the sine function. 
because now the point repeats itself and the same pattern is going to continue as far as we want it to. So the one period of this sine function is going to be 2 pi. So if you look from the starting point to where one cycle completes, the period of this is going to be 2 pi. On the other side, we can do the same exact thing. That same pattern will also repeat on the other side. So it's going to mirror this, this side and go like this. And it can just keep going and going and going. Let's talk about cosine. I'm going to once again draw the unit circle. So this is 0, this is pi over 2, this is pi, this is 3 pi over 2 and back to 2 pi. And by the way, you, you can do this any time. If you forget something, you can just draw the unit circle. All right, our points are 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. So let's first find the cosine of 0 radians. Cosine of 0, remember, cosine is always going to be the x value of any ordered pair on the unit circle. So that's going to be 1. Cosine of 0 is 1. You can also use a calculator to find this out. Next, we have cosine of pi over 2. So once again, we look at pi over 2, look at the ordered pair, and the cosine is the x value of that ordered pair, which is going to be 0. For pi, the corresponding x value is negative 1. For 3 pi over 2, the corresponding x value is 0. For 2 pi, the corresponding x value is 1. So the graph of cosine looks like this. We have, so this is 1, negative 1. We have 0, 1. We have pi over 2, comma, 0. We have pi, comma, negative 1. We have 3 pi over 2, comma, 0. And then we have 2 pi and 1. So this is going to be one period of the cosine function. And look at the period, it's also 2 pi. And then this shape is going to keep continuing over and over and over again on both sides. And the period of, the, of a cosine function, so the, if you look at from point to point, it's going to be 2 pi. Now, um, a quick recap from college algebra. The vertical asymptote of a graph is a vertical line x equals a, where the graph uh, tends towards positive or negative infinity as the inputs approach a. So uh, there's a gap in the graph. And as the graph gets, in this case, the vertical asymptote is x equals 3. So as the graph gets closer and closer to 3, then it goes to either positive infinity or negative infinity uh, as we get closer and closer to the point x equals to 3. So that's a vertical asymptote. Tangent is going to have a vertical asymptote because anytime you divide by 0, you get an undefined value. And when you have an undefined value, that means we have a vertical asymptote at that x value. So the, the five key points for the tangent function are a little bit different. They're negative pi over 2, negative pi over 4, 0 pi over 4, pi over 2. Um, and let's go through and draw the unit circle again. So this is 0, this is pi over 2, this is pi, this is 3 pi over 2, and this is 2 pi. And we have our points, which are 1, 0, 0, 1 negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. Now remember that tangent is, for any angle, is the y value over the x value of that ordered pair. So if I want to find the tangent of negative pi over 2, so first let me find out where negative pi over 2 is. So when I go in the negative direction, I'm going this way, and negative pi over 2 is same as 3 pi over 2. This is equivalent to negative pi over 2 because I'm going negative 90 degrees. Okay, I'm going negative 90, so it's negative pi over 2. It's a point 0, negative 1. So the tangent of negative pi over 2 is going to be the y value, which is negative 1, divided by the x value, which is 0. And since we can't divide by 0, 
here we get an undefined value. An undefined value means we're going to have an asymptote there. So at negative pi over 2, what happens is we get this vertical asymptote. Sorry, I seem to be having a, a technical issue here. Nope. Okay, so at negative pi over 2, because we have an undefined y value, that means we have a vertical asymptote. All right, let's look, take a look at negative pi over 4. So negative pi over 4 is going to be negative 45 degrees. For this, the unit circle is no longer going to be sufficient. So let's go ahead and sketch negative 45 degrees. Uh, negative 45 degrees is going to be over here. The reference angle for that is still going to be 45 degrees. So theta, even though it's negative, we take the positive value for the reference angle. So our theta prime is going to be 45 degrees. And if I take the corresponding ordered pair, the x is positive and the y is negative. So that's going to be a positive radical 2 over 2 and a negative radical 2 over 2. Tangent is going to be y over x. So tangent of negative pi over 4, or negative 45 degrees, is going to be the y value, which is negative radical 2, over the x value, which is radical 2. And then that's going to give you a negative 1. So, a negative, so this is negative pi over 2. This is negative pi over 4. This is 0. This is pi over 4. Um, this is pi over 2. And then between pi over 2 and pi is going to be uh, 3 pi over 4. So at pi over 4, uh, our negative pi over 4, uh, our corresponding x value, or y value, is going to be negative 1. All right, now let's go to the next one. Our next pair of point is going to be 0. So at 0, which is here, our y value is 0 and our x value is 1. So if I want to find the tangent of 0, I'll do the work over here. If I want to find the tangent of 0 radians, it's going to be y, which is 0, over x, which is 1, and 0 over 1 is going to be 0. So here is going to be our next point. For pi over 4, I'm just going to use the same graph here. Pi over 4 is going to be 45 degrees. And the order pair on the unit circle is going to be, you know what, I should have used a different one. I'm sorry. I'm going to redo that. So next, I want to find a tangent of pi over 4. Pi over 4 is 45 degrees. So I'm going to sketch a 45 degree angle. And my order pair on the unit circle is going to be radical 2 over 2, comma radical 2 over 2. Tangent is y over x. So if I have y over x, that's going to be rad 2 over 2, uh, radical 2 over radical 2, which is 1. So for pi over 4, this is going to be 1. And then for pi over 2, if I look at 90 degrees, my y over x is going to be 1 over 0. Okay, so my, my tangent of 90 is going to be y over x. The y value at 90 is 1. The x value is 0. That's undefined. Undefined means I'm going to get a, an asymptote. So the basic tangent function is going to look like this. So at, at the asymptotes, the function is going to go towards negative infinity and positive infinity. So it's going to look something like this. This will be your tangent function. And that same pattern is going to repeat. So let's take a look at how much it takes for the pattern to repeat. Oh, you know what? I'm so sorry. I graphed this at 3 pi over 4, but I should have graphed it at pi over 2. I apologize. Let me redo this. So my, I should have a tangent at pi over 2. It's going to look like this. Now let's take a look at the horizontal distance required for the shape to repeat. 
we're going from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, which is a distance of pi. So the period for tangent is not going to be 2 pi, it's going to be pi. So, so far, what I'd like you to do is, I would like you to, um, to start kind of memorizing these three shapes. So for sine, we're starting at 0, 0, and we have this pattern. For cosine, we're starting at 0, 1, and we have the U-shape pattern. And then for tangent, this is going to be our pattern. So you're going to have, if you, if you, if you go pi units, so we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. One, two, three, four. Then you're also going to have another shape like this. So the tangent graph has this kind of a shape. In class, we are going to talk about the cosecant of x, the secant of x, and the cotangent of x.